Hello everybody, uh, Randy Goblin here. Uh, just want to let everybody know uh, the reason why there hasn't been any content at all is not because she's lazy. It's because um, we've been doing a lot of one-shotters and they're just you can't do a video for a one-shot thing. Just can't. And you mess up halfway through and everybody gets mad. Well, this week, I have a very special treat. We're doing... Crypt Horrors. I don't know why she keeps doing these undead things. I think they're really creepy. Ah, what the... Alright, so I'm going to be painting a Crypt Horror for you. Uh, I apologize for not having any more content on my channel than I have, but I've been painting a lot of one-shot items lately, and this is the first kind of stock item that I've had in a while. So I hope you find it informative and all that good stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base pretty much all the skin off with this... Uh, Death World Forest. Now, of course, if you really want to, I guess you can prime it with the Death World Forest if you can find that color anywhere. But personally, I just had a bad experience with primer that was not black, so I don't recommend that ever. Just use black primer. Just suck it up and just base coat the model the way that you should. In the long run, you'll be better off for it because if nothing else, the GW Black Primer goes on smooth. Never use the white primer because it is garbage. I just had a bad experience with it and I'm very frustrated right now. But I'm going to finish base coating the rest of this. Alright, so now that we've got a nice coat over all the fleshy bits, um, the next step is to do a kind of a thicker dry brush of uh, the stricken green over top. Now we want them to be kind of dark, so it's not going to be A lot of the Strecken Green. Like, I really want the Death Forest world in the low areas. I know it's kind of hard to, to kind of see. Maybe once I get it all done, you'll be able to see, tell a difference. Alright, so I got a nice kind of dry brushy coat of the striking green going on here. And it's dry. So, next step is actually going to be some Reichland Flesh Shade. And I know this is a, it's kind of a weird thing for me to do. Because I'm all assuming that if you watched any of my other videos, you would have thought I'd be using one of the green washes for this. But actually, because these things are, are you know, organic kind of critters, the undead nature of their skin doesn't mean that they didn't have blood at one point. So, what this does is it kind of gives 
that used to be living look to them. At the same time, it's kind of muddying them up. Because, you know, these guys are not big on hygiene, so having them be a little muddy is good. So you just coat all the green with the Reichlin Flesh Tone. Okay, so the Reichlin Flesh Tone has had time to dry. And as you can see, it's given a kind of muddied look to the flesh. The next thing that we're going to do for the skin is I'm going to do a dry brush with the under high bash. Now it's not going to be a big dry brush, like a thick dry brush. It's going to be very light. So I get some on the brush. And I wipe most of it on my palette. Because I want this thing to look dirty and pale at the same time. And the underhive has a nice kind of green tone to it. So as you can see, it's kind of whitened up. It's kind of lightened up the face here and where I've kind of brushed on the arm as opposed to like, you know, this side. And I'm just going to go over just the detail, like the kind of top highlights with that. Alright, so now that I've got that under have ash kind of dry brushed on top here. As you can see, it kind of pulled out like all like the kind of scars and like the heavy kind of the the heavy lines on the musculature. And that's about the last thing that we're gonna do for like the skin. Uh, there's like one more thing, but that's some cleanup detail later. The next thing that we're going to focus on is uh, the bones. You know, he's got his spine coming out, trying to like leave his body, apparently. He's got like all these bone piercings, and his weapon's even a bone, so. And what we're going to use there is Utabi bone. And just kind of do an even coat. Alright, so now that we got all the bone bits done with Utapi bone, um, the next step is we're going to do just a tiny bit of like edge highlighting with the Screaming Skull. On the bones here. just like that just to kind of bring it up a little bit not getting down in the creases or anything like that but just enough to to make it just a little brighter because we're gonna darken it up after we're done with all that okay so now while we're waiting for the screaming skull to dry on the bones um, we're gonna move on to the, the weird hair back here and over the crotch. And the base kit that we're going to use for that is going to be Celestia Gray.
And then we just want to get the hairs coated with this. Don't worry about covering up individual hairs because we're going to bring those back out later. Alright, so now we've got the hair coated in the celestial gray. Don't forget the back, the back end because it does hang down. Um, we're just going to let that dry for a little bit and we're going to move on to the teeth for right this second. And the way that you're going to do those is uh, Pallid Witch Flesh. And you just want to go in with your brush very lightly. And just kind of pull them out. Just like that. And I'm also going to do the eyes that color as well. Just like that. Now, I mean, you can do them like red or yellow or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just doing mine this color because I think having the white kind of pupilless eye just makes them look more kind of undead. Alright. So if you accidentally mess up with like the eyes or something like that, you can actually take um, some Gorthor brown and uh, use it as a touch up. Like if you accidentally spill something on the the kind of brownie parts, because it, it's about the the right color to to fix it. Um, as far as like spilling on the green part. Uh, you can go back to the Death World Forest and just be kind of sparing on the touch-up. Now, um, since the hair is dry, we're going to go back on, over it with some Uthalon Gray. And we're not looking for, sorry, I guess I bit backwards a little bit. Not looking for total coverage. Just, you know, pulling out the highlights. Just pulling out the hairs. Leaving a little bit of that celestial gray. in the creases. All right. Now the bones have had plenty of time to dry at this point, so we're going to wash them with some Agrax Earthshade. See how I'm not just dumping it, I'm just... Brushing it on and spreading it out.
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to wash the fur on the critter. And we're going to do that with nun oil. Just like that. All right, so now that we have all the washes dried on this thing, um, we're going to finish up the bones with termitus stone. It's a dry brush paint, so it's very, very dry and goes on pretty easy. And all we're doing. is kind of weathering these bones with the termitus as you can kind of tell the difference just by that much alright so now that we've got the termitus stone on the bones are done not going to mess with them anymore um, so we're going to finish off the the hair, fur, whatever you would like to call it and the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to brighten it back up with a small dry brush of uh, Ultawan Gray. So you just get some on your brush, wipe out most of it off. And just whoop. That's my little sound effect. And we just kind of bring it up a little bit. Just like that. Okay, so fur's done, bones are done, skin's done, mouth, eyes, all that good stuff is done. So we have very few things that we need to do left. So as you can see on his back here, um, all this musculature is very exposed, which is why we didn't paint it the skin tone. So we're going to paint it nice, mus uh, make it all muscly. And we're going to start with some Screamer Pink. And Screamer Pink is just going to be the base color. So all you want to do is just kind of go in all the way to the skin line and up to where it attaches to the bone here. And just color it all with that Screamer Pink. And I'm just going to cut the feed now because I don't want to screw up. Alright, so now that i got the Screamer Pink on the muscles here, as you can see, like they kind of go up and attach in weird funky places to his spine, which is apparently he's trying to escape his body. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Horror Pink, or Pink Horror. God, I never want to say that correctly. And... do my kind of detail layer on that and all I'm wanting to really do with this is get the pink on top and leave the screamer pink like down in the creases and that's pretty much all I'm wanting to do all right, as you can see, I got the horror pink on there, and you can still see like the screamer pink down there and like the 
the deeper parts. The next thing I'm going to do is use my Kerberg Crimson and wash all this pink. Alright, so while I'm waiting for that Caraburg Crimson to dry, let's deal with the claws. And the base coat I'm going to do for that is Abaddon Black. And all you do is just Paint his nails black. And you know the foot talons too. Don't forget, see he's got his nails on the back of the bone? Get them too. Alright, so now that I've got the nails and claws and whatever black, next step is we're going to put a little highlight on there. And to do that we're going to use some Skaven Blight Dinge. And all we're going to do is take the Skaven Blight Dinge and just paint one little thin line of Skaven Blight Dinge over the top where the light hits it. That's it. There you go. Big secret right there. Alright, so now we're going to talk about doing like the finishing touches. And to start off, we're going to pull out some Nurgle's Rot Technical Paint. And all we're going to do with this is. use it to pull out any of these like pimples or just nasty lumps or whatever because you know he's undead and he should have like oozing pustules and whatever alright so unfortunately on this model there isn't very many of those but the crypt horrors vary so some will have more than others but anyway, moving on. Um, now that the Kerberg Crimson is dry here, I'm going to go ahead and pull out some Blood for the Blood God technical paint. Because I don't imagine that somebody's spine freeing itself from their body is not bloody. But I'm not going to be like super gory with this. Just kind of brush it on kind of over the top here so it makes it nice and shiny looking and like don't worry about kind of getting it on the the spine a little bit because, you know, it's ripping itself out of the body. It's not going to be perfectly clean. So, I mean, having just a tiny little bit of that blood smear onto the, onto the bone there, probably not a bad idea. Alright, so now I've got the Blood for the Blood God on. As you can see, I didn't go, like, over the top with it. Because, I mean, they're undead, so they don't have a lot of blood left. I just kind of smeared some on there because I think it looks cool. Um, feel free on your own models if you wanted to to like add you know more gore effects around like the piercings and whatever. Um, I chose not to, uh, but you certainly could. Um, I did add a little bit of blood like right here in this kind of open gash 
on his hand. But, so we're nearly done. There's like one last final little step to do. And that's taking some termina stone again. And this time we're just doing a super light highlighting dry brush. on just the top of the nails and the claws just to kinda give yourself that one last little hey look these are kinda shiny highlighting bit and there we go and this is how you do a crypt horror. I hope you guys find it informative and good luck with uh, painting your own.